Alex closed his eyes for a long moment and started rubbing his forehead with his forefinger and thumb. He had a massive headache, and Dr. Norton's news was not helping anything. He felt the world spinning around him as he watched the high school burn. The school was mostly brick and cinder block, but there were enough flaming objects inside to cause a large fire. The explosion had sent large pieces of flaming rubble flying out in all directions, and it had hit several of the people outside of the police barricade, including several officers. People were running around with their clothes on fire, screaming in agony as onlookers gaped in horror. A few officers and bystanders tried to tackle the people who were on fire and smother the flames, but most just watched the chaos, too stunned to do anything. The building was a mess too, and the people inside weren't doing much better than the ones on fire outside. An entire line of classrooms on the second floor had exploded, and an inferno was raging in the classroom on the end. It was like something out of a nightmare, and Alex could have barely process what was happening. He could only stare in horror at the carnage. Despite the ringing sound, Alex became vaguely aware of a voice in his ears. He looked at his phone and realized that Dr. Norton was still on the other end. Alex! Alex! he said frantically. Did you hear me? Two vitals of serum are gone. Dean and Alyssa must have taken them. Alex groaned and rubbed the left side of his head, trying to alleviate the headache. I heard, he said in a haze. I'm at their school now. I think the building exploded. This is terrible, Dr. Norton said. This is going to destroy my work, my career too. If anyone finds out we are responsible, our progress is going to be ruined. Alex felt a ball of rage rising in his chest. Those kids were transformed into terrible monsters. A school is destroyed, people are dead, and even more people are in danger, and all you care about is your work? Alex, Dr. Norton said in a lower tone, there will be serious legal consequences here. If people hear about our involvement, both of us could go to jail for this. You're unbelievable, Alex said incredulously. Alex, please think, Dr. Norton began to say as Alex hung up the phone. He stood up and began walking towards the school. He felt like he had a concussion, and he could hardly walk in a straight line, but he made his way towards the entrance. The ground was on fire in front of him, and debris had fallen in front of the entrance, but he managed to pick his way through the mess and climb over the rubble, and soon he was inside the school. Lockers were shredded, there were holes in the floor, ceiling tiles were destroyed, and lights were hanging down from the ceiling by loose wires, many of which were sparking with electricity. The school looked like it had been hit by a tornado, but to Alex's relief, there weren't any bodies, and there was no blood. Still, it was a dance, and he knew most of the people were near the gymnasium. His headache was still pounding in his skull, and he cradled his head in his hands as he stumbled towards the gym. He could hear people screaming in fear and pain in the distance, and the sound felt like it would split him in half from his head to his heart. He thought about Alyssa and Dean, and he just couldn't imagine them turning into such terrible monsters. It all felt like some horrible nightmare. It was all wrong. They were good kids. They had good grades, and they didn't cause trouble. Why would they do something so reckless and careless? Why would they throw their lives away and turn themselves into monsters? Dean had wondered if the serum would help him grow muscles, but he had been told it wasn't ready for human testing. Why would he even want more muscles anyways? Even if he did want to become stronger, there were safer ways to do it. He could have worked out. He could have trained. Even steroids would have been better than taking an experimental drug. And why had Alyssa taken it? It wasn't like she wanted to be a bodybuilder or anything like that. The two of them should have been enjoying a senior dance together, not prowling around their schools as hideous rage-filled monsters, murdering everything in sight. Alex made his way quickly to the gymnasium. The school seemed to look more and more like a war zone the closer he got to the gym. Two times along the way, he encountered a group of kids who were panicked and running away from Dean and Alyssa. Both times, they almost trampled him to get away. He tried stopping one of the kids to see if he knew where Dean and Alyssa had gone but the kid only stared at him with wide eyes filled with horror before shaking himself loose and running away. Alex let the boy go. He needed to find the monsters that used to be his friends, and it was faster to follow the trail of destruction than it was to try and get answers from scared high school kids that were running away as fast as humanly possible. It wasn't like Dean and Alyssa had made it hard to follow them either. The hallway looked even worse than it had when he had entered the school. The walls and ceiling were still shredded and torn to pieces, and the floor was still covered in rubble but where the entrance had been blood-free, the hallway he was in now looked like something out of a slasher film. Blood covered the walls and floor, and Alex wanted to throw up. By the looks of it, he wouldn't have been the first one to do it. There was so much blood and gore, he almost couldn't process it. At one point, he slipped on a patch of blood on the floor and landed on a dead teacher. He quickly got up and backed away in terror. The dead teacher just stared back at Alex with lifeless eyes. Something inside Alex snapped, and he began to run. When he got a hold of himself again, he was thankful that the teacher had been between him and the door when he ran, or he might have run out of the school and left the people inside to their fates. As it was, he ran without any real sense of direction. He was just running to get away. 
though he couldn't quite be sure which direction away was. It was as if Dean and Alyssa had torn the whole school apart in their rampage. He could hardly believe it. There was part of him that honestly didn't believe it. It had become convinced that Dean and Alyssa weren't really responsible. How could two kids do something so terrible? It was even harder to grapple with because they were both good kids. He knew them. He had known them for most of their lives, and he couldn't comprehend how they could have been to blame for all the destruction he saw around him. He was still struggling with his thoughts about Dean and Alyssa when he entered the gymnasium. When he saw the gym, he opened his mouth to scream, but the sound died on his lips. Dean was standing over a student in the middle of the gymnasium. He had a wicked look as he eyed the student. The kid tried to back away, but Dean grabbed his foot and dragged the kid back towards him like he was a child's doll. The kid screamed in horror as Dean lifted him up and began to pull. The student's scream echoed in Alex's ears and he began to move towards the kid, but he was dead before Alex could have even covered half the distance. His tormented cries and the look on his face caused horror to well up inside Alex, and he knew he would be haunted by the sight in front of him for the rest of his life. No matter how many years would pass, Alex would still wake up at night and remember the student's face as Dean ripped him in half. There was a loud pop as the kid's joints were pulled out of socket, and there was a wet, tearing sound as Dean tore him apart. The student died soon after, but the feeling of terror inside Alex only grew. He watched as Dean began tearing ravenously into the student's lower body with his teeth, drinking the blood and devouring the flesh. In a matter of seconds, he had stripped the student's right leg down to the bone, and before long, he had eaten the rest of the kid's legs, leaving behind only a few scraps. Then he ate the bones too, swallowing them in one bite like they were some tasty morsel. He was halfway through the kid's upper body before Alex could recover from the shock of what he had just seen. Some part of his brain realized what was happening. Alex had gained several pounds of muscle almost instantaneously. That didn't just come from nowhere. He had to feed for the serum to help grow his muscles and it looked like anything he could fit in his mouth was on the menu, even people. Alex would have kept watching with horror as Dean enjoyed his meal, but he saw a couple more kids hiding behind the bleachers. Both of the boys looked as scared as Alex felt, and Alex knew if the kids didn't leave soon, they'd be Dean's next meal. He made eye contact with one of the kids and pointed to the door. The kid's eyes grew with terror, but Alex pointed again and started working his way to the right side of the gym, hoping to draw Dean's gaze away from the kid. When he felt like he was in a good enough spot, he called out to the monster in the room, Dean, he shouted. Dean, stop! Dean looked up at him, and Alex saw that same lustful look in his eyes. He tossed the dead student's head to the side and stared at Alex for a long moment. Alex knew that he would be dead in a matter of seconds, but instead of moving towards him, Dean moved towards the kids hiding behind the bleachers. Alex shouted, but the monster didn't care. Both boys ran for the door, but faster than Alex's eyes could track, Dean lunged out and grabbed one of the boys. Alex screamed in horror as he waited for Dean to tear the boy apart like he had with the last student. But instead, Dean just held the boy in air with one hand and began to cut into his own side with his nails. Dean's blood began to trickle to the floor, and he pressed the boy's face to the wound. The kid screamed and cried out, but Dean wouldn't let go. Alex did the only thing he could think to do. He ran towards him, grabbing a chair that had been knocked over in the chaos, and slammed it into Dean's head. Dean hissed and swung an arm at Alex, tossing him aside like he weighed nothing. Alex hit the ground hard and watched Dean as he dropped the boy. The boy began gasping for air and holding his throat. His eyes were wide and he looked like he wanted to scream, but his throat wouldn't let him. He collapsed on the ground and began to writhe with horror and transform into a hairless, twisted monster like Dean. The kid didn't look as strong as Dean. Maybe the serum was diluted in the boy, though maybe it was because he hadn't started devouring people yet. Dean began to laugh as the boy went through his own transformation. The laugh chilled Alex's soul when he heard it. It was Dean's voice, but it seemed twisted and perverse like he wasn't there. He made eye contact with Alex before walking away casually after the student had managed to escape. Alex wanted to chase him, but the boy in front of him had almost completely transformed. Alex realized what would happen next. The boy would kill him and go on to hunt down others. Maybe he would kill Dean too, but he doubted it. Most likely, it would just be innocent people who would go on to be hurt by the destruction. Alex watched the boy, and when he realized what he was about to do, he felt like someone was crushing his heart with a hand made out of ice. He grabbed the chair and brought it down on the boy's head. He began sobbing and crying hysterically as he bludgeoned the boy, trying to kill him before the transformation finished. The boy screamed in agony, but Alex kept hitting him until the screaming finally stopped. Alex dropped the chair and slumped to the floor, sobbing. He stayed like that for several minutes before he heard screaming. This time, it was a girl. He remembered the look of lust in Dean's eyes, and he shuddered to think what cruelties he was inflicting on the girl. He remembered Alyssa's face too, and thought about the look of sheer rage in her expression. He knew that no matter how cruel Dean was, and no matter what violence he was committing to save his hunger, Alyssa would be even more cruel and violent. He felt the horror that had seized him fade. He thought about the two kids he remembered, 
and he knew that they were dead. All that was left were two monsters, and he wouldn't let them hurt anyone else. He didn't think he could stop them, but he could get everyone else out of harm's way, clear a path for the police. He stood up, and he knew what he needed to do. He began running towards the screaming girl. He found the source of the screaming in a classroom at the end of the eastern hallway. He saw lust and rage inside with a boy and girl. Rage was holding the boy against the wall. He was a tall, muscular kid with black hair and bronzed skin. He looked like an athlete, and he was certainly no featherweight, but she seemed to overpower him with ease. She was twisting his arm in an unnatural way, and Alex saw that she had already broken several fingers. He screamed in pain as she tortured him. On the other side of the room, Lust had the girl pinned to the floor as he choked her and licked her face. He seemed to be savoring the taste of the girl's flesh. Alex felt a fury rise in his chest, and he turned the doorknob before kicking the door open with all his strength. Rage was close enough that it slammed into her back and she dropped the boy, who crumpled to the floor in a ball, cradling his arm. Rage turned to see who the intruder was just as Alex slammed into her with his shoulder, knocking her off balance before he punched her in the face three times in rapid succession. He was a black belt in Taekwondo, but all his martial arts had left him in that moment, and he reverted to throwing punches with almost blind savagery. Rage howled and grabbed Alex, throwing him to the ground. The boy was completely gone from her mind, and she was solely focused on killing him. As she choked him, he began to see stars, and he thought he might pass out. She began to apply more pressure, and he realized that she would crush his throat if he didn't act fast. Behind Rage, he saw Lust slowly cut a line in the girl's arm with his nail, and he began to lick up her blood like icing on a piece of cake. The girl had passed out a while ago, and Alex wasn't sure if she was dead or not, or which would be worse. Alex shuddered and squirmed to get out of Rage's grip to go help the girl. He refused to die while those two were still on the loose. In an act of desperation, he flung his arms out and grabbed the fur on Rage's face, pulling her closer. Once she was only a foot from his face, he took his right hand and began to claw at her eye, trying to gouge it out of her head. Alex's hand was covered in blood as he pulled the eye out of her skull. Rage screamed and howled and let go of Alex, covering her eye socket with both hands. He drew in deep breaths and kicked her off of him. He knew she wouldn't stay stunned forever, but he used what little time he had to act. Get to the door, he shouted at the kid as he threw himself on Lust. He clawed at Lust's face and wrapped himself around the monster, trying to wrestle it off the girl. Lust was much stronger than he was and tried to throw Alex off his back, but he refused to let go. He managed to pry Lust away from the girl and pull him towards Rage. The boy, who had been crying in pain until then, had stood up and lifted the girl with his good arm. He was slowly moving her towards the door, and Lust screamed in fury at the two trying to escape. But Alex grabbed his ears and pulled as hard as he could, attempting to tear them off of Lust's head. Lust's scream changed from fury to pain, and the boy and girl were able to make it out to the door. Lust grabbed Alex and threw him against the wall before leaping on Alex. Alex grabbed part of a broken desk and swung it hard at Lust, breaking the desk across his face. Lust stumbled backwards, and Alex ran for the door. Rage had recovered slightly and lunged for Alex, missing his throat by inches, and he pulled the door closed on both of them. Alex didn't stop, but he looked over his shoulder to see Rage punch through the door and rip it off its hinges. He ran to the kids, scooping the girl up in his arms, and he and the boy ran down the hallway as fast as they could. They managed to put a little distance between themselves and the two monsters, but he could still hear them howling behind him, and he knew they were gaining on them. They managed to hide in a chemistry classroom behind some of the counters, and the boy began to sob hysterically. Alex set the girl down gently on the floor and shook the kid violently. Get a hold of yourself, he hissed. If they hear you, we're both dead. Tears kept coming down the boy's face, but he nodded. What are those things? the boy asked, still trembling. They used to be students here, Alex said bitterly. They were Dean Crane and Alyssa Mensch. I knew them both before they became those things. The boy's eyes got big. Dean and Alyssa? he asked. Oh, so you know them, Alex said. Well, I hate to tell you this, but your friends are now monsters and killers. The boy buried his face in his hands. They weren't our friends, he said, breaking out into a sob again. She and I bullied them. What? Alex demanded. Why would you do that? They were weird, he said, and I thought it was fun. And now they're going to kill me. Oh my god, this is all my fault. Alex moved to comfort the boy, if only to quiet him, but he felt like he told the boy the truth when he spoke. Bullying them was wrong, and you're a jerk for that. But this is their fault, not yours. Your actions definitely contributed to this. But those aren't poor, downtrodden victims known as Dean and Alyssa. They stopped being victims when they started killing kids. This mess is on their heads, no one else. The boy was still sniffling, but he nodded and stopped crying. Alex thought that they were almost in the clear, but the boy's eyes got wide with terror. Alex didn't need to turn to know what was about to happen. The room shook and the door exploded inward. Lust and rage burst into the room and roared at the top of their lungs. Alex wanted to cover his ears, but there was no time. He jumped over the counter and kicked rage in the face. Lust jumped towards the boy while rage stumbled backwards from the force of the kick. 
Alex forgot about rage, and he sprang towards Lust, grabbing his arm and yanking him backward as hard as he could. Lust was far stronger than Alex, but Alex had enough momentum to pull him backwards a few feet to keep him away from the boy. Lust turned back and snarled at Alex before punching him in the face three times with his free arm. Alex felt the blow like someone had hit him with a sledgehammer. He let go and sank to the floor. He felt himself drift into unconsciousness as he saw Lust walk towards the kids. Before everything faded to black, he heard several loud bangs and Lust staggered backwards three steps before falling to the floor. He heard another loud thud and realized that Rage had fallen on the ground next to him, dead. He smiled and closed his eyes before the blackness overtook him. When Alex woke up, he was in the hospital. He had a concussion, but he was relatively unharmed. The first thing he had done was check in on the two students he had saved in the high school. They were both very shaken up, and Alex figured they would be in therapy for a long time, but physically they were alright. The boy had a broken arm, but it would heal in time, and the girl had several long scars from where Lust had scratched her, but nothing fatal. He left the two students, and after checking with his doctor, he signed out of the hospital. The next several hours were the longest of his life. He made a phone call to Alyssa and Dean's parents. It was hard enough telling them that their children had died at the school dance. He didn't have the heart to tell them that their children had been responsible for the carnage. Instead, he told them that they were victims, and that he had seen the monster eat them. He didn't like lying to them. He felt like the parents deserved to know the truth. But he felt like it would be easier to deal with the idea that they had been killed than it would be to know that their children were the monsters responsible. He had lied to the students, too, telling them that he had been wrong, and that the monsters weren't the two kids they had bullied, but something else. Maybe that was easier for them to process, too, but he hadn't lied for their sake. He had only wanted to make sure that the truth about Dean and Alyssa never made it to their parents. After he got off the phone with their parents, he sat down on a bench outside of the hospital and thought about what Dr. Norton had said. He was disgusted when he heard that Dr. Norton had wanted to cover up the scandal, but he had done the same thing by lying to Dean and Alyssa's parents about the monster's true identities. He wasn't sure if he had done it for them, either, or if he had only done it for himself. He had thought about telling a half-truth, that the monsters were created by the serum, and that they had consumed Dean and Alyssa. It wasn't a total lie. Lust and Rage had consumed Dean and Alyssa, and the serum from their lab was to blame. There wasn't any other way he could think to spin it that wouldn't completely cover up the accident, but it was too close to the truth. Anyone who looked into the story would find out that Dean and Alyssa had visited Dr. Norton's lab that day, and it wouldn't be hard to connect the dots. There was no way he could tell the truth and still protect Dean and Alyssa's memory. He knew that. Still, there was one thing he could do. He could make sure that the same thing never happened again. He knew that he and Dr. Norton needed to talk. His car was still at the high school, and he was too concussed to drive. Instead, he called a cab and left for the university immediately. When he got there, he walked into Dr. Norton's lab. He was slightly frustrated to see that the professor wasn't there. The serum was, though, and Alex made his way over to it. He pocketed one of the vials and kept looking for Dr. Norton. Eventually, he found the man in his office, and he walked into the room without even bothering to knock. Dr. Norton looked like he hadn't slept, and he simply sat in the corner staring at the wall. When he saw Alex enter, he looked up at him with a broken expression. Oh, Alex, it's you, he said. We need to talk, Alex said, still standing. My whole life, all I wanted was to help people, he said, as if he were talking to no one in particular. I just wanted to help them be normal. How could my work have done this? Alex sighed and took a seat. That's not true, is it, Will? Your work stopped being about that a long time ago. How dare you? You more than anyone should know. Know what, Will? Alex asked. Know that normal is a subjective and arbitrary term? A societal construct? That there was no point in being normal if you could be better than normal? That your normal self was your true self? Oh, I do know that. I know that better than anyone. But you know something? I think I know a little bit better than you do. Oh, sure. You may have a PhD, and you may be a leading scientist, but you were dumb enough to fall for your own lies, and I'm not anymore. Oh, and I suppose you know better, Dr. Norton asked. I suppose you know what's the perfect normal that everyone should be. I know, it sure as hell wasn't that, Alex said, raising his voice. Normal is subjective, but it isn't arbitrary. You know that, too. You tried to say normal didn't exist to justify your abnormal work, and you left helping people back to normal a long time ago. Dr. Norton looked like he might explode, and Alex stood up and started pacing the room. My work does help people back to normal, Dr. Norton said. You're a man of science, Alex. You of all people should see that this work is promising. It can still help. Alex looked at him incredulously. You still don't see it. Even after all this, he asked, gesturing around him. Your work was supposed to be helping people. Period. End of discussion. Instead, you traded that for helping people become what you thought they should be. And who said you could do it? Who said that you knew what was best for people? I thought I wanted to be a man of science, but if this is what it gets you, then count me out. Your evidence that the world doesn't need scientists. 
It needs men who know right from wrong to keep people like you in check, he jabbed his finger at Dr. Norton. This has to stop. You have to put an end to your research before someone else gets hurt. Dr. Norton's look was unreadable. He sat back and laced his fingers, pursing his lips before responding. And what if I say no? he asked. Then I tell people who really made those monsters, Alice snarled, producing the vial from his pocket. Maybe I'd take the serum right here and now. People would start asking questions about your little lab now, wouldn't they? Dr. Norton's expression darkened when he realized what Alex was threatening to do. This research can still be perfected. It could still help people, he said desperately. And even if I wanted to put a stop to it, it's not that simple. The die is cast, the genie is out of the bottle. Pandora's box is opened, you can't undo science, Alex. If I figured it out, someone else will too. The only thing to do is to perfect it and make sure it never happens again. Now it was Alex's turn to have a dark expression. He knew that Dr. Norton was right that the science couldn't be undone. But he still didn't see how dangerous the research was, or that he was in any way responsible. He clenched his fists. This sort of science can't be perfected, Alex said. So you're going to scrap the project, and you're going to work on making a cure to that serum. Is that so? Dr. Norton asked. It is, Alex said, nodding to him and standing up to leave. I have my eye on you, Will. You're going to stop this research on the serum and spend the rest of your life working on a cure, because if you don't, I'll know. And I promise you that whatever monsters come out of this vial will be the least of your problems. With that, Alex pocketed the serum and left the lab, leaving Dr. Norton alone in his office.